Hey guys, so today uh, I'm finally getting around to fitting my uh, LSD to the uh, 335. Um, I've had this on the shelf for about a year and to be honest with you, when I first started out on this, I thought it would actually be quite a big job. Um, so I waited until after the end of the season had finished um, before I thought, you know, when I was going to take everything else apart anyway. So yeah, I thought I'd wait until until then just in case it was too disruptive or I cocked it up or whatever um, but today is now refit time um, to cut a long story short I have because the car's been apart for a while um, I actually put it into the diff housing um, a while back um, the only issues that I've come across is when or rather things you need to replace definitely is the outer seals so the drive shaft seals um, now I managed to find a place because when I searched for these online uh, it told me that they were the 100 mil seals and so I bought those turned out they were wrong uh, and I found they were actually 90 90 mil instead so there's a few variants um, that you want to keep keep an eye out for um, so I got those anyway, pop them in because basically when you remove the old diff you absolutely destroy them, you cannot pull them out in one piece. You can save the bearings, just about, uh, although I would, do, I would highly recommend replacing those. Um, but yeah, so you, you will destroy the seals. Uh, so let me tell you basically what I had to do in order to do that. Um, pretty much had to remove the exhaust, um, which sort of goes without saying. Um, the diff housing itself, down here, which I'll go into in a little bit more, more detail. There's actually only a few little tricky bits. Um, down here you'll see, over here, this is actually a 50mm nut. Um, sorry, 50mm nut, which locks to the uh, prop shaft over there. Um, that I actually undid with a set of grips. Now, whether that's been undone before or not, I don't know, uh, but it did come off relatively easily. Um, but obviously, if you've got a 50 mil spanner, then happy days. Um, the other things you obviously need to remove are the drive shafts, um, which I believe find the bolts are T ten or twelve, I think twelve, um, and you just take those off uh, just to drop it down. And then there is one bolt up here and two on there with the bushes. My, the bushes on those seem pretty good um, and to be honest I'm not going to replace them just yet because that would involve taking the entire subframe off which frankly I'm not prepared to do right now. Um, so oh, now what we're going to do is try and refit it. Before we do, if I just wriggle back out. Just a little bit about what I've actually put in here. So this is a M Factory helical LSD. Haven't changed anything with the final drive because the options for these are pretty limited um, when you're using the, uh, the automatic boxes. I was kind of lucky in so much that um, I got the bolt type ring gear. Now a lot of these don't uh, and they're actually welded on which does create a bit of a headache and it's why a lot of people just swap to the M3 uh rear setup but obviously i could do that i could do this with this one because well basically i had the bolt on type which is great um so yeah it's all ready to go i just need to basically offer it back up i'm going to go around and check all the check these are all nice and tight as well um they were sort of talked down on the bench but either way i'm just going to go around with, them with a spanner with a spanner when they're actually attached to the drive shafts just to check and um, yeah then hopefully it'll sit nice and snug up there cool see you in a bit so further on from this morning um well, this morning's video right um the diff is now back home this did take a little bit of fiddling around because this is the first time I've actually done this. Um, but 
it actually did go back on quite quite easily. So what you need to do this is there's a 21 mil nut up there, which has the 21 mil opposing bolt. Um, there's two 19 mil bolts over there that hold on the uh, hold the diff diff housing up. You can see that up there. That's good. And then we, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the 50 mil nut nut um, that holds the prop shaft onto the diff. And there's I think six on each drive shaft of T12 that you need to undo. It's a million times easier to take the exhaust off. I don't necessarily think you can do it without at least lowering it right down. Um, you also need a 16 mil for these bolts. And well, that's about it in terms of actually sort of taking all that cover off and refitting it. Uh, but no, it's on there. I filled the oil up. I put about, I think, 1.4 liters in, so maybe slightly overfilled, uh, but that's fine for now. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. Um, nice to actually be able to put the power down for once. Top stuff. So in terms of diff choice and everything like that, um, you're probably wondering why I chose M Factory uh, over something like Quaife, um, Wavetrack, or even a plated diff, to be honest. Um, and the answer is simply familiarity, um, but also cost does come into it a little bit, not gonna lie. Um, they are usually pretty competitively priced and because of the series that we run in as well, um, you can tend to get them supplied a little bit cheaper than perhaps the competitors. And I don't really feel, I mean, I've used them in the Civic as well. Uh, I don't feel there's any performance loss. I think they're really actually pretty good diffs um, for the money. Um, I chose not to have a plated diff though, because as per the Civic, I don't, I don't think my driving style suits them. Um, I definitely didn't, I was, definitely certainly wasn't any faster in the Civic with a plated diff, which is contrary to pretty much anything that anyone will tell you. Um, but for me, it just didn't work. So that's the reasoning. Um, I've always found that M Factory stuff is good, uh, nicely made, solid and reliable. So that's basically the reason for that.